Hello, this is Sean Roberts. I am Chief Technologist for Lincoln Network, and this is Lincoln Shorts. I have with me Peter Rasavi, Wireless Technology Analyst for Rasavi Research. Peter, we were just talking about that um, there's uh, misapplication of terminology, and when it comes to government and commercial, um, it's, it's rather important for us to get these terms right. I, I know historically, uh, terms like network and cloud and grid have been misapplied and engineer and mis been misapplied all over the place um, and, and tend to lose meaning um, uh, when we're uh, having discussions. But you're bringing up that there's a very specific term that means something very specifically in a 5G spec that's being misapplied. Uh, what is that term and, and how maybe we can uh, fix this problem so it doesn't get into government documentation and then uh, get all out of control? The term is dynamic spectrum sharing abbreviated to uh, DSS. The problem is that within 5G, there is a very specific capability called dynamic spectrum sharing, and it refers to the ability within 5G networks to be able to use the same radio channel simultaneously for 5G NR, new radio, as well as 4G LTE signals. So the scheduler within the base station dynamically assigns uh, sub-channels and time slots to either mm. LTE devices or to 5G devices. And it's right. a way for, a, for an operator to roll out 5G in existing uh, cellular bands where they currently have 4G LTE. So it's a fantastic innovation for giving operators more flexibility in rolling out 5G. In the past, they'd need clear spectrum to be able to roll out a new technology. The problem is that right now the DOD has a request for information out for new futuristic systems where the government could share spectrum between the military systems um, or maybe even non-military systems and commercial mm -hmm. systems. And they're also calling that dynamic spectrum sharing. Uh, they're leveraging uh, concepts that uh, have previously been around, such as dynamic spectrum access, DSA. That's a term in the, in the industry. But what they're referring to is some futuristic way where the government doesn't necessarily have to relinquish spectrum for commercial systems, but can share it um, dynamically. We already have something like that with the Citizens Broadband Radio Service, CBRS, but what they have in mind is uh, something uh, much more uh, advanced than that. So um, what do you, uh, what's your concern if, if they continue to use the, misapply this term, will it cause problems going forward when we're uh, having debates possibly in Congress about or in regulatory bodies that um, this, this term will be misapplied dynamic spectrum sharing? rather than using DSA? Yeah, I don't think it's going to cause any catastrophic problems, but it's just going to confuse a lot of people. There's just going to be a lot of wasted time on conversations such as, well, we need to invent this, we need to develop this new technology, and then people will be saying, yeah, but 5G already has DSS, so what's the problem? So right. it's really just, uh, it's just an unfortunate choice of terminology by DOD, in my opinion. Um, they at least said DSA, which is the term that um, was around for a lot longer before uh, DSS came along. Does this maybe expose a lack of understanding of 5G or uh, the 5G spec by the people that are actually writing and, um, and trying to uh, request information? I don't really have any insights to that. I, I know that, for example, the Defense Innovation Board has that that is involved in these kinds of uh, thought experiments and, um, and the RFI and, and so forth, you know, they have a lot of clever people. So I don't know why they happen to pick that term. Maybe they weren't aware of the particular 5G capability that I was just referring to. Hmm. Okay. Well, good enough. Um, well, uh, do we have any new information as far as um, the applications that were received or next steps from that RFI? The deadline for the RFI has passed, so right. November third, I believe it was. 
yes, a, a lot of um, organizations presumably provided comments. I formally um, filed uh, in response to the RFI, and I have not seen um, anything uh, where DOD has you know, published the, the results of the RFI or any conclusions that they've come to. Uh, it, it could be that with the change of administration that this particular approach uh, may change. So I don't really have any insights into that, but um, I do believe that some of the um, organizations involved um, may have had uh, some kind of relationships with, with the White House in, in regards to this matter. Okay. Um, one, th one thing I did notice that was published in November um, I don't have the exact date in front of me, but it was um, a note put out, I believe, by the NTIA um, uh, stating that they didn't believe that uh, this RFI should impact the, um, the proposed or the schedule of auction of a spectrum. Um, now, uh, as far as I understand, this is not an official note. This is just an offhand comment that has been published. Um, but uh, um, have you, are you aware of that comment at all? No, but space. I'm aware of that sentiment, which okay. is that there was a joint DOD White House effort and, and with FCC involvement as well before this DOD RFI, where they identified 100 megahertz of spectrum from 3.45 to 3.55 mm -hmm. gigahertz. And that is the subject of the FCC's notice of uh, proposed rulemaking. Uh, with the schedule of auctioning that spectrum at the end of 2021. That NPRM right now is in the stage of people providing comments. And uh, right now, I believe that kind of the majority consensus is that this spectrum should look like C-band, which is um, the spectrum uh, at, at the top of um, three gigahertz, the 280 mm -hmm. megahertz of spectrum, um, which is planned for auction. And that C band is really designed for 5G. And so the, the, um, the hope, at least in the wireless industry and the 5G industry, is that this 3.45 to 3.55 will look like C band. Okay. Um, and readily used for 5G and that it will not end up falling into CDRS kinds of rules, okay. uh, which would undermine its ability to support 5G on a widespread basis. Uh, understood. Um, it, one last, uh, to plumb this a little bit further, um, the, do, we, do you have any expectation that the um, change in ownership that's going to happen relatively soon, ownership is probably not crazy, uh, leadership is the correct phrase, um, of Edget Pai stepping down, a uh, new administration coming in and assume they were going to, um, uh, you know, propose their own FCC leadership and team anyway. Um, do you have any expectation that they would change course um, depending on who uh, has been proposed, a few names have been floated around, um, that they would interfere or slow down or do something to, um, to uh, impact the proposed auction? I don't believe so. I think there's fairly broad bipartisan support for um, unencumbered spectrum for 5G. Okay. The unlicensed crowd got a massive amount of spectrum at six gigahertz recently. Mm -hmm. So they should be satisfied for the moment. All right. <laughs> um, and with CBRS, we have a large chunk of spectrum that is, you know, some people call the innovation band because it's available to entities who previously um, didn't have access to spectrum, such as enterprises. Um, so we've provided spectrum for that and we're short on spectrum for 5G. So the logical thing is to make this available okay. for 5G in as smooth a fashion as possible. Awesome, awesome. Well, that's good news. Um, uh, stability always helps ventures move forward, whether they're nonprofit, commercial or, uh, or government backed. And uh, I guess in this way, this is possibly all three. Um, so, uh, or at least dependent on all three. Um, well, thank you for your insight, sir. This has been Lincoln Shorts. Uh